Doctor, thanks a lot for giving us uh, your time. What's on your radar right now, as I know a lot of uh, families, women who are pregnant perhaps do in the next little while here and are having an epidural as part of their birthing plan, concerned about what that means? Yeah, thanks Angie, thanks for having me. And I can say as an, I'm also expecting, so I'm a physician, but I'm also pregnant and I get why people are concerned. I think, you know, when expecting parents become anxious is when they don't have um, all the right information. And I think what's happened at the beginning, there were lots of rumblings and murmurings. Was this happening here? Was this more in the Western provinces? And, you know, before there was a coordinated approach and coordinated announcement, people were just anxious about whether or not they'd be able to have an epidural mm -hmm. um, when they go into labor. Well, first of all, congratulations on your pregnancy. That's wonderful news. Um, what are you seeing in terms of the supply right now? I mean, are we at a point that people do need to be concerned that Ontario hospitals are now saying, okay, we have to try and figure out a plan B here. So, you know, over the last few weeks, there has been a concern over a global shortage. Right. At first, it seemed it was mainly in the Western provinces. So currently, right now in Ontario, at a provincial level, there is enough supply. Obviously, there's variation at a hospital level. But those hospitals, if they are running out, they're really encouraged to contact their Ontario health regional contact to help sharing between hospitals and to support escalation with you know other suppliers mm -hmm. so really at a at a provincial level there really isn't a shortage and we can share between hospitals really patient care has not been impacted i work at unity health we haven't had to turn um okay. any anyone away if they requested an epidural patient care is resumed the same there really haven't been any issues but of course we're working you know every day to make sure that the supply is okay at every hospital yeah which is of course critical right whenever there's a bit of an alarm bell goes off that you don't want to say okay oh my gosh we're dealing with a shortage here but you need to lurk long term which is clearly what doctors are trying to uh, raise the issue on. Have we ever been in a situation like this where, uh, you know, something like this, which is so common for so many pregnant women to use during birth, many of them choosing an epidural to perhaps have a more comfortable labor. Have we ever been in the situation where there could be a supply issue? Well, you know, since I've been practicing, I've never heard of an issue with epidurals, but right. we're seeing this in many different areas of the healthcare system in terms of the supply chain issues. You know, there was a point where we were having issues with um, collection tubes for routine blood work. Mm -hmm. There was an issue, uh, um, you know, so I think we're seeing it in different areas of healthcare right now. And I think it's what you said is really important. This can happen again. Mm -hmm. And so if we're all relying on one supplier, that creates a perfect storm for shortages. So looking into the future, how do we have more of a coordinated effort in terms of these supplies right from the beginning so that, you know, patients and providers um, don't get anxious and worried. And how can we look at multiple suppliers so that we avoid the situation in the future? Having that plan B, as you know, Dr. Ann, as a, as a mom, is, uh, is so critical. Dr. Talia Bulger, Chair of Family Medicine Obstetrics at St. Michael's Hospital. Stay safe and well, doctor. Thank you.